I sent you an email uh, two days ago about midterm two. Does everybody get that email, first of all? Uh, anybody who didn't get? Okay. So midterm two is on Tuesday. So we'll be using uh, we'll be using both of these rooms, this one and that one. And I already sent you which person should go to which one. So we have two rooms. Okay. And I already told you also that I have an office hour in the morning. So if you have questions, you can ask me that. I send you a sample exam problems, this set, with 18 questions. Some of them are very close to exam questions, but also in exam you have to, you have to you know, be ready for completely different questions as well. Uh, so it's, of course, advise, I can advise you solve all of these questions to make sure that you can solve these. I'll say about 10 of them are very, very straightforward. And uh, some of them uses inequalities, so you don't need to know how to write graphs, proofs, very deep proofs about graph theory. That's the, that's the thing. And then the coverage is at the end of today's lecture, but uh, I can say that it includes the planar graphs, which we haven't done yet, okay? So my plan today, uh, because if we start with quiz and problem solving, we may not feel like learning new thing afterwards. So instead of that, I would like to start with one hour of lecture with planar graphs. And after the lecture, in the next hour, we can start with a quiz and then solve five, six questions for the midterm. And then we'll finish like that. Okay. Is so, uh -huh. that? Can, can we do a quiz like that? No, this is what the idea. After the quiz, I want to solve the quiz problems, homework problems, and uh, all the all the problems. So we'll start with planar graphs. Um, Now, uh, these planar graphs, if you notice that in this sample exam set, out of like 18 questions, uh, five, six of them are about planar graphs. I actually uh, realized that the proportion of that in the exam is more than uh, we'll be spending time pretty much. But it has, the reason it's interesting is, first of all, it has inequalities to tell you exactly what is planar. It also connects to some other things like platonic solids and so on. This was one of the problems that I introduced at the beginning of the year as one of the sample problems that you can use graph theory to solve it. Okay? So let's start with the definition. So a graph is vertices and edges between them. Normally, when you try to draw a graph, 
you have crossing of edges, which is okay in normal graphs. But in planar graphs, we are not going to allow that in such a way that So, for example, if you're trying to draw a graph, say a complete graph with four vertices, we used to just say this is, this is the graph, but now you are not allowed to do this point, right? Because this is not a vertex. So to draw this in a planar way, you have to do this. So K dirt, K4 is a planar graph. And this is, this is its planar drawing. So you can have a graph which is drawn in a bad way. And by changing some things, you can make sure that it can be drawn. As soon as it can be drawn in one way, then it becomes planar. It doesn't matter if you, in the same graph, you draw it with crossings. If you could draw it without a crossing, then the graph becomes planar. You can have a lot of other planar graphs, like this. So as long as there's no crossing, this is all planar. Okay. So like uh, you could connect these. Still a planar graph, really. So this is also planar. In the KM family, the next graph, K5, if you try to draw it in a planar way, So you can say, okay, I'm going to draw this. And you can say, okay, this you can connect. But there's one missing, this one. You can't draw without crossing. So with K5, you should be having an edge between any two vertices, right? For one, two, three, four, five. And I could only draw nine of them. I couldn't draw the last one. So K4 is not planar. But of course, we have been doing proofs in this course. We need a proof for this. Okay. So why this is not planar? This is what we will try to understand. It will turn out that if K5 is not planar, K6 cannot be, because if you can draw K6, K5 will be sitting in there. So if, uh, if G1 is a subgraph of G2, and if then uh, G2 is planar, implies G1 is planar. So anytime you have a bigger graph, which is planar, it tells you the smaller one is also planar. So in the same way, similarly, also, if you reverse that, if G1 is not planar, then G2 is not. So because K5 is not planar, the conclusion you can get from this is very strong. Uh, Kn for n bigger 5 is not planar. Actually, any graph that has k5 in it is not planar. So any graph which has click size 5 is not planar. So any graph 
in fact, any graph uh, with click size, maximum click size 5, is not planar. So there is a relation with the click sizes or maximum subgraphs of Kn. But again, this we have to show, we have to, we have to see it. Just because we couldn't draw, we cannot say it cannot be drawn. So this is the, this is the difficulty. So there is a planar graph here. To see that something is not planar, what you do is this. You take a lot of planar graphs and you study them. You analyze what common property these graphs have. Okay? You look at them, you deeply try to understand what's going on with them. And once you understand fully what's going on with them, you can see that any graph which doesn't satisfy them cannot be planar. So, one thing you notice from a graph like this is that when you have non-planar graphs where you have crossings, or non -cross like when we used to draw things with possible crossings like this, it's a mess. Like you can't tell what's going on in this region, like who this belongs to. There's all these cuts, crossings. But in this graph, it's clear that there's these regions in the graph. So one important thing about planar graphs is that there are regions. This is almost like the uh, land which is divided by some uh, borders between them. Okay. So, for example, there's a region here. This could be somebody's farm. There's another region here. There's another region here. It's called USB car. So these are regions. Okay. So first observation. Is that in a planar graph. There are regions. Okay. Now, if you mark these regions, R4, R5, you see also that this outside completely is another region. So here, like, you have six regions. In an arbitrary graph, we can't talk about regions because there's all these other cuts. So this something only happens with planar graphs. If I throw the K4, for example, again. Oops. I have region 1, region 2, region 3, region 4. So this has four regions. What else we have? We have vertices, like as usual. And we have edges. What Erdar did was uh, try to understand the relation between number of vertices, number of edges, and number of regions. You can easily count it with different planar graphs. For example, here you have one, two, three, four vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six edges, and one, two, three, four regions. You always include the outside region. Okay, this infinite region is called, is there also. In this one, there is more vertices, and there are more edges and more regions. So how many vertices do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you have twelve vertices. How many edges? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then six regions. So what Euler did, which makes a very good mathematician, uh, is observe something with these numbers. We can actually draw a couple more. It's something that's very easy to observe. And it becomes Euler's theorem. So we can draw a couple more if you want. Like this is also a planar. One region, two region, four regions. One, two, five vertices. Third base out. Oops. So looking at all these triples, can you see a relation between them? And now we can write it as a theorem. Exactly. So if you sum these up, bit plus, minus, plus, you get always two. So this is what he said. This is going on. The condition, only condition you need is that this is connected, okay? So for a connected planar graph, this holds. It has to be connected because this holds in every connected component. So if you have more than one component, the number changes. There is a proof for this, which uh, instead of writing line by line, I will actually show the proof on this big graph. Um, and then we'll look at how we can use this formula to decide if K5 is planar. So this is the proof. I'm just going to sketch the proof, basically. Mm. Proof is basically an algorithm that tells you you can make your graph smaller and smaller and continue having still a planar graph. Now, this is a planar graph. And you can have another planar graph out of this planar graph, uh, which has less edges or less vertices. Okay. So what you do is that you find an edge. You find an edge, for example, this one, which separates two regions on the graph. So it separates R1 with R6. Right? This R6 is here, so this is R6 too. So we find an edge which separates two regions. And you erase it. Find an edge which separates two regions and erase it. Now, the effect of doing this is that you lose an edge. But because it was separating two regions, now you have one region instead of those two regions. So you lose a region two. Okay? In the new graph, the vertices doesn't change, but edges is one less, and regions is one less. They're both one less. You lost one of each. But the formula doesn't change, right? Now, 
These ones cancel, so you get the same thing. So if this is 2, then this one is 2 as well. Which means by induction, uh, this one is true. We can say by induction, this one is true. Hence, this one is true. By induction means you have less vertices, less edges, so it's a smaller setup. You can set up your induction on the number of edges, for example. Since this has less edges, it's true for this, so it should be true for this. But the catch, let's do. when you do this process, so you erase them, you have only one region now. And then you find another one, say this one. You erase this, you have one region. You can find another one, erase this, you have only one region. You can erase this, and then you have only one region. And so you get this, and then outside. Outside is R1. And now you find this one, you erase this one, so you have only one region. At the end, you may get a something that there are no edges which separates two regions. That uh, this may happen. So this is only possible if you can find this edge. Now, if you cannot find that edge, what you do? Okay. If there is no such edge, then uh, the graph has only infinite region. So you only have one region. So it has no cycles. So if it has a cycle, it will bound to infinite from a smaller inside region, right? So that means that it has no cycles. And it's connected, so since the graph, the resulting graph is still connected. We get a tree.